Hi there, and welcome to another JavaScript SEO office hours uh, recording or public office hours um, hangout. Uh, with me are 10 people in this hangout tonight, and uh, you have submitted various questions on YouTube. So let's see if we uh, find the time to go through all of these questions. Before I jump into the YouTube questions, anyone here in the Hangout having any questions so far? I've Three. Got yes, got there you go. Uh, WebSockets. Um, obviously, Googlebot currently doesn't support WebSockets and kind of things. But do you think that will ever change? Because sometimes you see things like, I mean, I can understand why normally, but there's things like Firebase that has its live connection, and there's some other things mm -hmm. that sometimes use WebSocket, and Blazor as well, which is a new thing, which is kind of compiles in. So, so do you think that will ever change, or do you think it's always going to stay as it is? So. Um, while I cannot make any comments on the future, really, because I don't know what's going to happen, the fundamental goal for Googlebot and Google and Google Search is to make the uh, world's information generally accessible, including the web, obviously. And uh, so if we see a major trend going to web sockets for essential communications, we will eventually probably have it as well. Um, at this point, it is a very niche technology in the sense of that most of the crucial content that people consume does not come over WebSockets or that it has a fallback mechanism. And as you said, we are not supporting it at this point in time, but I can't make predictions for the future. There's nothing. Yeah. It's not that I am like, oh, yeah, we are about to like release this. Um, no, uh, there's no plans to be communicated at this point for uh, WebSockets. But very good question. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I will be typing these questions down as well so that I have a running log of questions so that I can identify more frequent questions, uh, which usually is a hint for us that we need to be addressing these um, additionally uh, in the documentation. So if you see me typing, that's not because I'm like, I don't know, chatting with my coworkers with John or something, but it's that I am trying to keep track of what gets asked. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions from the audience? If not, then I'll start with some questions from YouTube. I've seen that multiple people on YouTube submitted questions around lazy loading, which is really interesting for me um, because it tells me that I might want to look into our lazy loading guidelines again, uh, as it's apparently not clear yet. So to start with one, Lighthouse recommends lazy loading off-screen images. I usually do this with JavaScript, and I use either a placeholder or a very low quality version of the image as the initial source. Is this low quality version or placeholder likely to be indexed over the lazy loaded images with JavaScript? That depends on your implementation. Um, if you use the testing tools, you see what we are seeing. If we are seeing the higher quality versions or the non-placeholder images that you load using JavaScript, that will be fine. If in the testing tools you see that the rendered HTML contains the low quality version or the placeholder image, that means that there's something in your lazy load implementation that isn't quite right, and we would not see the higher quality version uh, or the actual image lazy loaded by JavaScript in that case. So use the testing tools to determine if your setup works for us. Um, the other thing is you can also use the native lazy loading uh, attributes for images so that you have something that degrades nicely or actually progressively enhances, really. Um, so a browser would only see the regular image, and you would specify just the image source that you want, the high resolution image source that you want. And then Googlebot would also see that. Uh, and you would lazy load uh, on top of it when the browser supports it, so that's not an issue there. And it's built into the browser, so you don't have to worry about implementation problems with your JavaScript implementation. Question, how can I ensure that a one-time notification on each page is not indexed in Google? Is an onload event a solution because the, of this one-time notification we are now found on searches, including the term corona? Well, the onload, there's like two different questions, really, in this one. Uh, do we not see things that run on or in the onload event handler? Uh, no, we're going to see those. 
So that is not a very solid way of making sure that we are not seeing your notification. We might sometimes not see things uh, when it, when they only trigger on the onload event, but that's very unlikely, and that is probably because weird or shoddy JavaScript. Um, I would very simply check if there is if if the navigator uh, user agent is Googlebot, and then if it is, don't show the notification. Is one way of doing it. An alternative way is to hide it behind a, a user interaction, so only users that scroll or click or do something on the page somehow uh, see the notification. I think for Corona warning notifications, you just want to have whatever. Like it's basically the same situation as with a cookie banner. Um, so you could definitely use something like uh, a button to actually only show the notification when it has to, you know, when when the user has interacted with the page or when the user clicked on the page or something like that. Um, if you don't want to wait for an interaction, I would go for the um, loading it only when Googlebot is not there or basically sniffing out if it's Googlebot or not. It's not a great practice, um, but it is not cloaking either because what you're doing is not swapping out content. To mislead the user, you're just loading additional content. It's basically the same situation as if you would do server-side or dynamic rendering, where the content might be slightly different, um, but it is still the same content that the user would expect coming to your page, unless the, the notif uh, notice for Corona would like, completely remove the entire content and only load that. That would not be a great idea. But use that wisely and carefully, uh, and you won't be within like cloaking limits, so you should be fine. Questions from you all, or should I continue with the YouTube questions? Yeah, on, on the topic of uh, cloaking, can you, can you go a bit more in detail? What is uh, the what, what is considered as cloaking and what, what what's not? Uh, what, where is the uh, the like the gray line? Or I, I don't know. So that is a really interesting question. Um, where is the gray line? So that the where is the gray line? I can't do much in terms of giving you too much detail. For that, but fundamentally, cloaking means misleading the user. That means if I see that Googlebot is requesting my site and I say this website is about kittens and butterflies, and then um, when it's a user going to that website instead of Googlebot having I don't know like an online drugstore or trying to sell knockoff pro uh, products or something like that, that would be very much against the uh, intention of the user, and that would not match what we would show in search results if the user searches for cute kitten or something like that. right? So that's very, very clearly cloaking. What isn't cloaking is if my website content is slightly different, because we all know that with responsive web design, we might have slightly different content to begin with. Um, on a mobile phone, I might only leave, load one product um, instead of 10 products or something like that, and then have the user click. Uh, through multiple pages or something like that. That's not cloaking. That's just slightly different content uh, depending on on what the uh, what the browser can do or what what the what the device capabilities are. That is fine. Uh, if you show slightly different content for Googlebot than for real users, like a notification or a pop up that doesn't show uh, when Googlebot comes in, that is mostly fine. Unless it is like a pop-up that has 90% of the content in it, and on the actual page is only an image, then we are again was like, hmm, is that does that still fall within the grounds of like the user sees what the user expects or what we saw as Googlebot? But generally speaking, as long as you're not misleading the user, you're definitely on on the safe side. What you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be misleading your user. Anything that is within reasonable uh, reasonable bounds of that. Is not a problem. Okay, because I, I can think of uh, two examples. Like, for example, loading this uh, dynamic approach, like ser uh, server side rendering uh, some part of the page, but then uh, actually enhance the behavior with uh, JavaScript. Like, um, but the, the content actually is the same. Okay, or, or yeah. a, a more extreme case, the second case is actually loading. Loading the the translated version via JavaScript. That is a little tricky one. So the first okay. case is def is definitely not cloaking. The first one mm -hmm. uh, is just slightly different content, but it has the same um, 
has the same topic. It has the same. Uh, I, I have the same intention when I go there. Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, when you load completely different content in the sense of a completely different language version, okay. that is trickier. Uh, we do have mechanisms for that kind of stuff. So, for instance, you can use uh, an alternative URL to something that is linked via hreflang. Okay. Um, that would be safer. Whereas when we're like, OK, so this website is about, I don't know, cats. And uh, it's very clearly is about cats. But then when I go there from my browser and it says cats, and that's, that might not always be easy for us to distinguish that this is just a, uh, the same content just translated. So I would be very careful doing that kind of stuff. But okay. you see like there are certain gray areas. Um, and it might be that this works, actually. I don't know. But that sounds to me like uh, there is potential for this going wrong. So I would probably tread carefully. But just loading slightly different versions of the content because of server-side rendering versus client-side rendering, that's not something that you need to worry about, definitely. OK. Thank you very awesome. much. Awesome. You're very much welcome. Other questions from the Hangout? Or I go back to YouTube. OK, a question from a uh, submitted question from YouTube. I have a site where it's Angular based, and all of the content, uh, including meta tags, title, canonical, and the site content itself, is rendered on the client side. Will this affect our ranking? No. Unless it's broken and we're not seeing your content, it will not affect your ranking. Uh, if your website is very, very slow, that might affect your ranking because speed is a ranking factor, but it's only one out of hundreds. So you shouldn't worry too much about this. Um, but definitely test, 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 test if you do that. I also noticed that GSC, Google Search Console, is warning us on mobile issues for tag archive pages due to its rendering on first load as the CSS gets injected in later. Uh, any recommendations? Um, Try to load the critical CSS as quickly as possible. That's also a recommendation in Lighthouse, by the way. Um, and then only load CSS in later that is non-essential for the initial render. Uh, that should make these warnings go away, because that might actually cause trouble when we try to figure out if a page is mobile friendly or not. So um, I would recommend to get as much CSS, as much critical CSS inlined into the page as possible, but not too much uh, for the obvious reasons that then your HTML is too large and so on and so forth. Uh, Lighthouse has pretty good guidance on that. So check out Lighthouse for your CSS troubles. Questions from you all? Because maybe these inspired you. OK, I take one more from YouTube, and then um, We'll see if questions come up here. Ah. Hi, Martin. What is your recommendation for the most optimal way of troubleshooting if a, sorry, there's someone trying to get into the, oh, the pop-up has disappeared. OK. Uh, hi, Martin. What is your recommendation for the most optimal way of troubleshooting if a JavaScript-based website is having issues with slow indexing, where content is not indexed immediately due to longer processing times? Not 100% sure what this means. If this is aiming at the two waves of indexing, don't worry about them. We have discussed that last time. Um, if you do see that users are taking a very long time until, or for users, your website is very slow, that's something that you want to improve on. Um, I highly recommend using uh, the web page test or a Lighthouse to get a feeling for how fast your website is on people's devices. But generally speaking, slow indexing because of long processing times is not really that much of a concern these days. Anyone having a question to jump in with? Uh, yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? So, yes. No, no, it's work. I have a little bit of trouble with my Mac. So, um, I have a question about uh, structure data. Mm hmm. We have a dynamic uh, render page and add to this structure data. And we don't know if Google can get this normally with uh, the render engine from it, or it's a little bit difficult for Google to see the structure data. Then we didn't know, has 
he the structure data or not. We don't see anything in the Google um, search results. Right. That's a very good question. Um, when you say dynamic rendering, do you mean as in like you are using something like Rendertron or prerender.io or um, do you mean server-side rendering? So we uh, we don't do pre-renderings. We we uh, only uh, deliver at the moment. Um, client side. Uh, yeah, client side. So client side. But the okay. Google uh, Googlebot, I think the Googlebot do pre-rendering with Puppeteer. Also, you talk about in your stream. Yes, uh, Renatron. I mean, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, we are not actually using Renatron, but we do render pages. So that that we yeah. actually do. I can show you something. So um, to give you an example for no, 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 none of these. Uh, to give you an example of what you can do is I have created a few test pages to show this. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have a website that, wait, hold on. Does not actually, I, I'll try to make this larger so that it's easier to read actually. Give me a, just give me a second. I think, yeah, this should be better. Um, we don't need that at this point. So this website does not have any structured data in it. As you can see, there's no structured data here. But it does use uh, Google Tag Manager. And if you check out this one, then you see that it does have some um, structured data using Google Tag Manager. It's in injected dynamically. Mm -hmm. um, and when I want to know if Google actually sees this, I can just go to google.gle rich results. So the rich results test, I don't need that anymore. And then if I run this, I will see. I know. Thank you very much. I will see if it gets picked up or not. And uh, it gets picked up. In this case, it has successfully picked up that there's some organization markup and that there's a logo in there. And you can use the rendered HTML to see if your structured data shows up. If it is in the rendered HTML, that means that we are also seeing it. So generally speaking, okay. it should not be a problem. Um, if you need some support for that statement, then you can check out our developer documentation because mm -hmm. under guides, enable rich results, there is generate structured data with JavaScript that has a lot more details than what I just described. But basically, we have documentation for this. Now, the, the question is, uh, and like, why am I not seeing this in Google search results? That's because structured data is a necessity or a requirement to actually be eligible for rich results, but does not mean that we will always display rich results. So even if your structured data implementation is correct, we might choose not to show rich results because for, I don't know, various reasons. There might be a faster website. There might be a website that has uh, higher ranking information. Um, there's lots of factors to consider. It's basically a ranking question, and I can't really comment on ranking questions. Uh, but you make yourself eligible by having validating um, structured data. And you can use the rich results test to see if we are picking it up. Uh, so uh, to understand this, so um, I, uh, if I add this literate um, rich result, uh, it's not guaranteed that Google showed this. So Correct. But uh, if Google shown not nothing structured data from anything else uh, with the search result, this is uh, okay. This can be the problem from size ranking or something uh, something else. It, it can be all sorts of things that make it not show up. Uh, mostly ranking related things. Um, as long as we are picking it up, and also Search Console should show you if we have picked up the structured data. If it is in Search Console and or a, you can see it in rich results test, then you have successfully implemented it on the technology side of things. OK. Doesn't, okay. doesn't guarantee that it shows up in search results. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question in the chat. I have a question from my developer partner who doesn't want to ask himself directly. Well, that's fair. Uh, we sometimes see websites which check the user agent in order to set specific behaviors for the Googlebot. Can it trigger something? Can it be seen as potential cloaking? And if so, how does Google work? It's very common here in, bi in, in our bilingual nation. Uh, interesting question. We kind of scratched on that earlier on. If you are changing content so that we are under the impression that you are misleading the user, that would be considered cloaking. 
just uh, user agent sniffing and then loading slightly different content. Or for instance, uh, the example I gave is what is fine to do would be to say, oh, this is Googlebot, so I'm not showing a, uh, a corona information banner. That's fine, whatever. This is not primary content to your website anyways, so you can just hide it out. Uh, if you're using it to swap out or redirect uh, from a page that is about kittens to a page that is about cheap drugs online, uh, that is cloaking. So generally, when we can't, when we have the feeling, or when we when we get the uh, when we get content that is wildly different, that is considered cloaking. Where is the border between legitimate content changes and illegitimate content changes, aka cloaking. That is a tricky question, and you will want to stay away from the murky waters in the middle of that spectrum. Um, so as I said, like server-side rendering something or hiding a notification from Googlebot, that's definitely not on the dangerous side of the spectrum. Completely going somewhere else and actually showing completely different content, that's a risky one. Uh, we had the example of translations. What if I auto-translate the content um, under the same URL? That is in the murky waters where I say it might work, it might not work. I would probably steer clear of that and not risk it. Uh, it's a tricky one. Um, but generally speaking, small content adjustments do not run under cloaking. Uh, that's why the where the bilingual comes in. We have some really funky decisions made by companies on which language they want to show you. Um, if a contest is not available in some provinces or some regions uh, in one language version, and but so let's say like you have a have a website in I don't know Canada where you have French or whatever they consider French and uh, English, and you have some content that is only available in English. What I would do if it's only available in English and I'm on the French side is I would either say like have a page that says, oh, this, this content isn't available in this language or in this province or whatever. Um, how about you go there and have a link to the other thing or just do a 404. But don't try to be clever and don't try to force different content on users where they don't expect it. It's not a great user experience. And I'm not sure if Googlebot will handle this gracefully. So you definitely want to be very carefully testing this uh, or avoid this to begin with. I think that's like my guidance on that. Do we have questions in the uh, in the audience, or should I go back to the submitted question? Uh, I have an extended question to the, um, sure. to the question before. So mm -hmm. I've tried this with my patch, and we add uh, the 3D structure data. And I see I get no test result uh, with this 3D structure data, but with another structure data. Is the testing tool cannot act uh, at this moment testing the 3D structure data, like the one from uh, Wikipedia with Tiger? Mm -hmm. I or think. I think that is a definite possibility because I think the test currently is limited. I'm not sure mm. where the where the um, we have something saying that there is a limitation to this, but I'm not sure. Ah, here supported types. So currently we support a bunch of types, but we don't actually. I can put it in the chat if you want to check the chat. Um, that's the piece of documentation that explains which types are supported. What you can do, though, is in the structured data testing tool, and actually, I'm going to run this real quick through screen sharing one more time. Um, I will be sharing this entire screen. Uh, if you are running this and you don't see your structured data, what you can try is you can, oh, come on. Here we go. Use the rendered HTML, and you can A, look for the, wow, thanks. Uh, you can A, look for the structured data to be present here. But you can yeah. also use it to actually take it from here and go into the structured data testing tool, structured data testing tool. And that one should hypothetically support this uh, better because it has a few more things in support. Uh, it should show up here. But even that is not a guarantee that it's correct. You would have mm. to manually make sure that everything that we say is required is actually present there. 
Uh, 3D data is a tricky one because it's relatively new. Um, and I'm not even sure if it is like public public yet or if you are in a early access program. Let's okay. see. But that's relatively easy to find out. We can go in. Wait, where is the structured data gallery? It doesn't look like it is generally available at this point, the 3D data. Um, at least it's not showing up in here. So you might be in an early access or early adopters program. Mm -hmm. Yes, 3D and AR results are currently uh, limited to, to people in the early access program. You can use a form to express interest if you're not having done that already. Thank you, thank you. Uh, OK, good. I need to uh, call to my boss, and uh, we need to add to the early access program. Then the most of the page is 3D data. First. In that case, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank awesome. you really much. You're welcome. You're welcome. OK, other questions? Oh, a question on YouTube has been answered. Uh, oh, the, one of the lazy loading questions. That's cool. In that case, I may have a look at YouTube one more time. Um, hi, does Googlebot have some issues crawling isomorphic pages, and does it understand client-side routing, or is it still safer to do the routing on the server side and avoid page rehydrations on the same URL? Uh, no, Googlebot does not have fundamental issues with isomorphic pages. Uh, isomorphic pages, for those of you who are wondering, are basically just like server-side rendering plus hydration, where you run more or less the same JavaScript uh, on the server side as you do on the client side. Um, we support that. Uh, client side routing is fine as well. Um, and rehydrations are OK, too. Just make sure that it's implemented properly and that you test it with our testing tools to see if the content that you expect is actually visible to us in the rendered HTML. You can use the Google Search Console uh, URL inspector tool, inspection tool. You can use the rich results test. You can use the more friendly test. Uh, any of these work. And with the rich results test and the mobile friendly test, you can do it on uh, like local development and URLs as well. If you use a tunneling tool like Local Tunnel or Ngrok or something like that, you can basically plug any URL in and see the rendered HTML that we see. So that's quite nice. This article compiled the quotes from John Miller, Gary, and Martin over time. Some of those quotes seem to contradict each other. Uh, there's, a, there's a guide from, or an article from OnCrawl on lazy loading. Uh, and it seems, seems to contradict each other. Um, the guide is from 2019, from April 2019. It's like a year old now. And the contradiction comes from the fact that they have, I actually read the article earlier. Um, because I saw this question earlier. If you look at Google Search over time, you will see that it keeps changing and keeps improving and keeps. Um, we, our mission is to basically make sure that we understand the web that you create, so we keep improving things. That also means that quotes from a month ago, from a year ago, from five years ago, might no longer be true. Things evolve. Um, in this article, there are a few things that look like they contradict each other and not necessarily contradict each other. <clears throat> and actually, this is elaborated in the question as well. I know lazy loaded images are, in principle, indexable if done properly. But is it worth the risk to lazy load important images like product images, even if they are below default? Yes, it is worth it. Because if you, especially if you use uh, the, the native lazy loading, there is no risk whatsoever. Because it is an image element that has the actual product image as the source, it's just loading uh, um, lazily when the browser supports it. So even crawlers that don't run JavaScript will get the high quality image. But users on browsers that are more modern will have that support and actually get a slightly better experience, or actually much better experience, depending on your network speed uh, and the price of your network, especially on mobile. Um, Lazy loading is quite an improvement, and I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I would be careful with custom implementations these days, because why? Right? Uh, if, if some browsers have it and other browsers fall back to less great but still solid behavior, 
I think that's worthwhile uh, taking or, or using this opportunity. Um, also, do no script actually uh, also is no script actually helpful for image indexing for lazy loaded images, or is it like John Miller said, Google ignores it? The quote there is slightly out of context. I think I actually haven't. I don't remember. I think it, the the quote is slightly out of context there, um, because we do ignore content in no script except for images. Interestingly enough, uh, for images specifically, we have a workaround that allows you to use um, images in no script, and we will index it. But we are not sure how long that's going to stay that way. And if we really need this, if engineering finds out they don't need to do this, they don't need to support this, they might remove it. Uh, we have seen with the uh, pagination situation last year that that can lead to confusion. Um, it does happen every now and then. There's many, many engineers working on this. And sometimes they decide that, well, we get the signals elsewhere, so it's not no big deal. Then they run an experiment, find out, yeah, it really is no big deal. But then we have to communicate the changes. So I would shy away from no script because there's better alternatives. The alternatives are using latent lazy loading, which is a fantastic progressive enhancing way, or using a uh, as robust as possible JavaScript implementation to do lazy loading. So I would not use the no script fallback. At this time of recording, today, April 8th, uh, 2020, as far as I'm aware, we are still supporting the no script workaround for images. Um, but that's specifically for images. It does not work for the other things. Cool. Questions in the meantime? I've got another quick one. That's OK. Uh, sure. When, when you use the testing tools or anything and render a page and give the rendered HTML, uh, it flattens iframes out in, in there. Are they considered just part of the content for ranking purposes, or do we not know? Is that secret source? Or <laughs> in cer it's not secret source, um, and it is observable in the testing tools too. In certain cases, we will flatten iframe content into the document. Um, that is when the iframe is large enough, and when the uh, content is. I'm not sure what what the other signal is that we are using to consider it in, in, as inlineable, but if it's inlined into HTML, it is at least sent to indexing. What I don't know at this point, because that is also a question about indexing and, and somewhat related to ranking, is how ranking slash indexing actually considers this content. It is marked as a flattened or, or in, injected or um, inlined. I think inlined is the term we're using. It is marked as inline content. I'm not sure how it's used in ranking. I'm not sure how exactly it is used in indexing. So I would assume it gets inlined in certain conditions. And if you see it inlined in, uh, in the testing tools, that means that we are at least seeing the content as part of this document. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So very good question. Other questions? All right, then I'll take another one from YouTube. There is a website that is dynamically excluding part of the content on its mobile version using JavaScript instead of CSS as a responsive solution. A read more button. The content is being sent by the server but excluded in the client side. Mobile friendly tests and GSC seem to not recognize that piece of content. Is that correct to affirm that the hidden content may not be read by Google? In your case, I tr I'm not 100% sure what the details of this implementation are. But if you say read more button, then I'm assuming that you mean an actual button that we would have to click on to load the additional content. If that is the case and the content is not there in the rendered HTML, no, we're not going to see it. And we're not going to see it because there is a user in interaction required. We're not interacting with your page. We're not clicking on anything. Um, but generally speaking, if you don't see the content in the rendered HTML in the testing tools, it means that we're not seeing it when sending it to indexing. So yes, uh, you want to be very careful with that uh, Im implementation. Unless you want to exclude that content, then mission accomplished. 
Do we uh, have actually? Or, yes. Uh, actually, this implementation, uh, the the content is being passed uh, by the server, and it's being uh, uh, suppressed in the in the client side. In the client so side. There, what does that mean? It's being suppressed. Like dot remove with JavaScript. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Then we're not seeing it. If you remove it from the DOM, we're not seeing the content. Okay. Awesome. That's my main question because we were discussing if we just pass it by the the server, it was enough to 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 render and to to interpret it. So it's not right. No. If we are removing, uh, if you are removing it and we are rendering it, we are seeing the removed. Uh, we're not seeing the removed content because we are sending what is um, rendered to indexing. So the tools show you we have successfully removed the content you wanted to uh, to remove, and we are not seeing it in, in indexing. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, other questions? OK, building up on this uh, topic, what, what about the, the content that's on, on mobile, for example, that uh, is hidden or invisible that, for example, a sidebar that would appear on desktop, but on mobile, uh, it requires a, a user interaction, like a tap on a show, show, show sidebar to see the sidebar. But the sidebar content is actually when it's actually in the HTML, mm -hmm. let's say that. So uh, would Google would even consider that content? Because it's not actually visible until uh, a user clicks on, on show sidebar, but it's there. I mean, on desktop, it's there as well. It's in the, in the HTML. But on mobile, it's not visible by default. So. Let me be very careful here. Uh, anything that is in the DOM is considered for uh, indexing. So whatever we render, that goes into indexing. Um, that means something that is invisible but present in the DOM, in the HTML, we will see that. right? Whatever is in the rendered HTML that the testing tools give you, we will use that for indexing. Now, if it is invisible, we might consider certain cases. Like, for instance, if it is invisible uh, and matches topically, then we would consider it maybe not as important as the visible content, but we mm -hmm. would still consider it. So we might not uh, show it in bold in the, in the snippet or something like that, but we will still consider it. Um, if it is unrelated or it, if, 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 if it feels it is a spamming uh, technique to basically just add additional content that the user doesn't really see and doesn't really need and, or isn't really beneficial to the user at this point, then we might uh, exclude it from the actual weighting. But fundamentally, if it is related, useful content, uh, even if it is not visibly visible, as long as it is in the DOM, we will see that. So the rendered HTML is what goes into indexing. And then indexing makes decisions based on things like, is it visible or not? But that doesn't mean that we are not seeing it or not not using this for indexing. OK, thank you. I've had this question for, for, for so long. <laughs> no worries. And it is a tricky question, because a lot of people understand different things when they say not visible. Um, it's like, it's not visible. And then it turns out they mean not in the rendered HTML. And it's like, well, if it's not in the rendered HTML, no, we're not seeing the content. Um, whereas, like, if yeah, but it's and then you can do like stupid things when you try to hide stuff. It's it's pointless, uh, or even if it's uh, that's a tricky one. If you require a user interaction to add it to the rendered HTML, so like if you have to click a, an actual button to load the thing, we would also not see it, and it's not really present then. So there's like gray zones of that, but um, very fundamentally, uh, we are seeing invisible content. Uh, if it's part of the rendered HTML. Thanks. Now it's clear. It's finally clear. Awesome. <laughs> uh, to answer Miriam's question, what's the one question you I'm itching to answer today? I already answered that one. Uh, that was the lazy loading guide question. Was like, oh, there are so many con uh, comments and, and quotes from you all, and they're contradicting each other. 
And I'm like, well, the article is a year old, and also the comments were collected over a long period of time. That's something fundamental with SEO. The web is moving forward really quickly, which is amazing, because that means that we get to improve and build new cool stuff on the web. Um, and Google Search is trying to keep up with the web as it evolves, so things change. Things change constantly, and the only constant thing is change. Um, but that also means you want to be very careful when you read outdated articles or when someone says, like, when I tested this five years ago, usually whenever I hear someone talking about something where I'm like, that's outrageously wrong, and I ask, so where does this come from? Then usually they say, oh, like three years ago. I'm like, yeah, three years ago, we didn't have headless uh, Chromium in Googlebot. We didn't have evergreen Googlebot. So since 2018, this has dramatically changed. So the best recommendation I can give you is uh, whenever you hear a quote and you're not 100% sure what's true or if it's true or not, uh, test it. Test it. A good article should tell you, this is what I did. This is why, why I put it in. So like for instance, there's an article that explains that uh, Google Tag Manager and structured data does not work with Googlebot. And that article is like two years old, and they have a uh, a piece of code that you can copy onto your page and try it out. And I took that piece of code and I put it into the structured data testing tool. And yes, structured data testing tool does not show it. Structured data testing tool is not the latest and greatest in terms of using the right infrastructure. Um, the rich results test, however, does use the actual indexing infrastructure and, and uh, um, shows you what we are actually seeing when we index your page. And that one showed the structured data. And I'm like, aha. So the source of these conclusions is outdated because structured data testing tool is outdated. But because this article was very transparent and self-contained when it comes to how to test the hypothesis and uh, that they that they started with before they came to the conclusion, I could go along and say, like, yes, the article is right. That was the case back in the time. It is no longer the case as seen here by taking that exact example, putting it into the actual tools, and seeing that it works, um, where it didn't work when the article was written. So always take everything with a grain of salt, including the things that Google has said. If I say something today, it might be valid today and tomorrow, but not in two years not in one year, maybe. Make sure that you have the latest sources. Uh, our documentation, we are not always 100% up to date, but we are trying our best to stay as up to date as possible. And usually, we draft the documentation before the thing is launched. And when it launches, we update the documentation in one go. If not, then we usually communicate that very clearly. So um, make sure that you are not jumping to conclusions. Test for yourself and uh, try to find the most up to date source of information. Now, another question from the chat. Giacomo is asking, for websites like e-commerce that are using structured data for products, when we need a very quick update on availability for a specific product out of stock or something similar, would you suggest implementing structured data in the HTML without JavaScript? Will Googlebot parse structured data after getting the non-rendered version of the website without waiting for the internal Chrome service to render page queue in the render list, or structured data will pass anyway after the rendering phase? The queue is um, at median five seconds. So assume every page gets rendered these days, um, and that does not make that much of a difference. However, that being said, I in the guidelines for structured data and, and JavaScript, I noticed that we do cache aggressively. That means if your JavaScript needs to update to actually reflect the new change in structured data, which might not be the case. If you use Google Tag Manager, then the JavaScript does not need to update because it's just a data change. Um, if your JavaScript needs to update to actually reflect the new structured data, then you definitely want to make sure that you use proper caching. In this case, like something like long-lived caching with uh, hashes or, or version numbers or something like that. Because if we use an outdated cached version of your JavaScript that contains the structured data as part of the asset, uh, we might not see that updating very quickly. So I highly recommend um, making sure that your JavaScript is updating and caching properly using uh, Google tools. Basically, whenever you see an update, you want to make sure that what we are crawling is actually the latest version of it uh, rather than an outdated version. If you don't version your assets, that is very, very hard to debug, just to give you an example. 
Generally speaking, putting your structured data on HTML is probably always going to be more robust, um, but there's nothing inherently wrong or faster or slower um, regarding JavaScript and structured data. What's the average expiration day for technical statements from you? Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it is years. Sometimes it is months. Sometimes it is weeks. If you asked me about the Google Chrome version that is being used to render, if you would have asked me that two weeks before I.O. last year, so let's say like you would have asked me that end of April 2018, I would have said it's Chrome 41. That would have immediately changed in May. I would have hinted at that to potentially change soon. But some people then ignore the fact that I say, but this is about to change, uh, and then just quote me on, like, Martin says Chrome 41, which is true. I said that. They're just ignoring the sentence I said afterwards. So be very, very careful when people are quoting me. Um, generally speaking, just point to our guidance. Our guidance is 99% uh, likely to be the actual source of truth. Average expiration, I don't know. A month, maybe? Don't know. Uh, cloaking question. If we use dynamic rendering on a page with infinite scrolling, would it be OK if the static HTML version that crawlers see have href links to the paginator? No, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, if you have uh, pages, uh, as in like previous and next, or pagination links in the version that only Googlebot sees, that's not a problem. That is OK. That's perfectly fine. That's not an issue. All right, one more question from YouTube, maybe. Would you generally recommend implementing dynamic rendering on e-commerce sites that use JavaScript to display products on category pages? My feeling is that this should make indexing more safe and accurate, especially for crawlers other than Google. We've said it multiple times. Uh, as far as we are concerned, dynamic rendering is a workaround. I would not recommend dynamic rendering to anyone who can reasonably switch to server-side rendering and hydration. Because server-side rendering and hydration gives uh, a more robust rendering to crawlers that don't understand JavaScript, as well as a better and usually faster uh, way of rendering things for users as well, whereas dynamic rendering is only useful for bots, especially those that don't run JavaScript. So dynamic rendering is considered a workaround. I would not necessarily encourage people to do that unless it is the most viable option for them until they can consider server-side rendering, or if server-side rendering is an investment they are not willing to make or they can't make for whatever technical reasons. Um, but generally speaking, if you if you come to server-side rendering and hydration, sure, go for dynamic rendering. Um, that will definitely help you with crawlers and bots that don't run JavaScript or don't run JavaScript as reliable. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, let's say. But understand that dynamic rendering, uh, even though it's a workaround, does incur infrastructure costs and does mean maintenance on your end um, and can hurt you if it's implemented incorrectly. Everything that is implemented incorrectly can hurt you, including HTML, static HTML. Um, so it's just more complexity, and you want to be careful if if you really need that additional complexity to reach whatever goal it is. If you don't really care about search engines that don't support JavaScript, as far as I'm aware, Bing supports JavaScript, Google supports JavaScript. Uh, if your rendered HTML in the Google tools looks fine, at least we are not concerned. Um, I'm not sure how you test in, in other search engines. Uh, but unless you have a good reason to implement dynamic rendering, I wouldn't. OK, do we have other questions? No. Do you guys have questions? Or do you, ladies and gentlemen and others, have questions for me? Uh, so if nobody has a question, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's uh, for the uh, type of cloaking question. It's so we have um, we have three D data and a table with information of this three D data on our page. Mm -hmm. The Google bot uh, is coming to us with uh, the mobile version. Mm -hmm. I can see in the uh, GSC. 
so and uh, the point is in the mobile version we show the user first uh, the 3d model and secondary uh, he can click on a button and uh, the uh, table is showing and 3d model is displayed now so mm -hmm. it's a cloaking if we say okay both content is in the same time in the content but uh, if the google bot comes he see first the uh, table no that's not cloaking. okay okay perfect all right awesome i think it's time for the last couple of questions now is your chance i ran out of youtube questions as far as i can tell uh i can refresh the page maybe there's an additional one i don't know mm, no 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 doesn't look like it no no one asked uh, oh actually no that's not true there's one more question can FAQ, schema, and special announcement be read and indexed by Google delivered through JavaScript that is powered through third-party tool or platform? Possibly. Uh, it depends on the implementation. It depends on if they let us uh, crawl, or actually, if they let us request their um, resources. So let's say you are using uh, urexample.com, and you are using a service from structuredata.org. I don't know. Uh, and structuredata.org says, oh, our, our API.js uh, shall not be crawled by robots. So they say, like, they block it in robots.txt. And what happens then is if we come to your website and your JavaScript or your website loads that JavaScript file, we can't load it because they are saying we can't uh, load that page using our robot. So Googlebot can't fetch the JavaScript so the JavaScript doesn't run and then the content doesn't display. That is a scenario that happens more often than you might think. Um, in that, and there's other ways as well. Like there can be issues on their side. There can be problems with your JavaScript. So you have to test your implementation. Fundamentally, technology-wise, uh, it is absolutely fine to have FAQ schema and special announcements uh, generated by JavaScript following our JavaScript and structured data guidelines. Um, but you want to test that very carefully. Uh, if the test shows you yes or good then you're safe. If not, then, well, then you want to either talk to your third-party provider or you might want to migrate away from that third party if that's something that you care for. Uh, test. Definitely test. OK. Time for a last question from the audience, if anyone has one. You can also write it in the chat if you don't want to speak up. That's also fine. I'm flexible either way. Cool. Wait, chat has a question. Is there a rendering budget for websites? No. Asking this question related to my previous one, because I can see that using Google Tag Manager for structured data and the big e-commerce site after a Googlebot visit, uh, we have not the structured data updated. This also for more than a week. Using HTML version, we get the data refreshed way more faster. Um, that is possible, but there is no such thing as render budget. This can be a caching issue, uh, possibly. Without looking at the specific website, I can't really make a judgment on that. But um, if you are seeing issues, you're very likely running into caching. And then if you really care very much for the data to upload, uh, update very quickly, then either host, Java, host and version the JavaScript yourself or uh, consider having it in the HTML. But again, caching uh, is king here. And also, if we are not crawling it very often, then I don't think that's going to be even faster. But I think from what you say is that we are crawling quite frequently, uh, as the HTML does have the update, whereas we don't when it's using Google Tag Manager. So I guess Google Tag Manager might be also affected by uh, caching, which would surprise me, but it's not impossible. OK, excellent. Uh, I would like to thank you all very much for these fantastic questions uh, and joining me here live as well uh, as on YouTube to give us uh, all your questions and, and discuss them here in this, in this forum. Um, the next 
JavaScript SEO office hours will be in approximately two weeks' time. I'll update the uh, YouTube community feed with the actual date, and uh, we'll also post the link there again. Uh, thank you very, very much for being fantastic. Stay safe, stay healthy, and all the best for you. Hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. <laughs> trying my best. Trying Bye, my best. Everybody.